Processor. Uh, can you describe more the squeegee um, roller? What? Yeah, uh, she mentioned about the squeegee roller. Yeah, I will. Okay. <laughs> I will. Alright. <laughs> I told you what it's like. So that lady uh, gave you a, a you know, uh, talked about it. Uh, what I used to do, yeah, I used to have a handout, I used to take students, take groups to the dark room and show all those parts. You have the dark room thing. Okay, but you need to, once again, uh, you need to be familiar with this equipment because you're going to be tested on it. You take the national board, you're going to be tested on it. All right. Uh, you know, none of our affiliates have film anymore. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there are no films. Right. I told you that before, but I mentioned it again. Okay? You need to know. Because a lot of times people say, well, I'm not going to use it, and they don't. They don't put the time into it. You have to. You have to. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you're going to have problems. Okay. So, once again, remember three tanks developers, fixer, washer, and then uh, the dryer. Uh, these are going to be the, the replenishing tanks. Uh, they feed into the tanks, and you have a drain that goes out. Okay. Let's see what else I want to give to you. Yeah. All right, so automatic processing. What were the advantages in comparison to hand processing? Well, it was faster. Okay, that would be a big thing. Uh, better image quality. Why better image quality? Because you had a consistent uh, automatic way uh, to process your images. So every film is processed in the same exact way. Every, every film is processed with the same type of uh, length how long is it in the processor, and the chemical concentration is always the same. When you're doing it by hand, you know, you're doing it by hand and maybe you get distracted for whatever reason, and then you leave the film a little longer than what you show, for example, or, or, or shorter time, or whatever. That doesn't happen with automatic processors. Uh, they, it's very consistent, and so uh, you have better image quality in that sense because Every image is processed in the same way. So consistency. All right. Uh, depending on what textbook you read, depending on how you're doing it, in general, this is these are the components that you will find in an automatic processor. Uh, can it be done in different ways? Yeah, it possibly can. But these are the ways. Uh, I think it's easier to understand. It's easier to make sense. Uh, they're all part of the same system. They're all part of you know, the uh, automatic process. <coughs> so that's one thing to keep in mind. They are not really separate. There is, is one thing that they are all doing. Uh, their function is to process the films. Okay. So the transport system, dryer system, replenishment system, they go, uh, I never do all those. You can do that. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the rats. Okay, the transport rats. Okay, uh, you're gonna have a set of rollers, crossover networks, drive systems, and so let's go. Right. Transport rollers. Uh, when we look at the transport rollers, uh, they are designed to move a film uh, and go through the developer, fixer, wash, dryer sections of the processor. So they are gonna move the film. That's that's their function. That's what the name. Okay, uh, transport system or transport rollers uh, being part of the transport system okay as, a, as the film is moved through the processor okay uh, the system is what controls the length 
they, uh, of the time the radiograph is immersed in the chemicals. You following me? Um, okay. So, yeah. okay, all right, I'll say it again. The transport system, okay, which the transport rollers are part of, that's why the name transport, transport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moves okay. the film through the tanks and the dryer and to, through the whole process. Well, through the whole thing, okay? And it determines the length of time, the length the, the film will be in the chemicals. At the same time, it also helps in agitating the chemicals. Why is that agitation important? Christina Kasansky, what do you think? Why is the agitation? Anybody else? Maybe because the heavier chemicals sink down, so exactly. agitation. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of salt and stuff, and if you're not agitating it, then you're going to have, you know, the more solid stuff on the bottom, right? And so the agitation is important. Okay. Uh, all right. The master rollers, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those. Uh, the master rollers is used to help the film make a turn at the bottom. So at the very bottom, okay, now, and I have pictures, you'll see them later. Uh, at the very bottom of each rack, there is this thick, okay, it's this thick roller, and it just is designed to help the film turn. So the film comes in this way. Okay, helps it. Okay. Okay, uh, going back to the transport rollers, one, one thing I forgot to tell you is they, they are, you know, if you think about it, they are positioned opposite to each other, right? And so you're not going to have just one, but it, it's, it's a set, set of two, 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 and they come down, come down, and then they go up. Okay, make sense? The planetary rollers. The planetary rollers are there. They are designed, they are surrounded, they surround the uh, master roller, and they are there to also help the, the film turn. So take a look. So here we go. So these are the transport uh, rollers. Sit next, uh, opposite to each other. See that? And so they help the film come up this way and then up this way. So you have the master roller here, it's a three three inch roller, and then you have this, this planetary rollers here. See this, this set of four, one, two, three, four, and then the planetary rollers to help you, to help the film turn around. On the bottom here, what she was showing on the video, uh, you have the guy shoes, okay? The guy shoe is here also, it's an it's a, it's a aluminum plate, and it's curve it's concave to help the film turn so all of this is called the uh, turnaround assembly okay yes uh, just to make sure so the agitators is help stir the ke uh, chemicals in the mm -hmm. tanks right mm -hmm. okay yes so is it just the two on the bottom that are the planetary rollers or no, is four. it all the one four. on the outside one oh, two okay. three four okay the rest of the transport rollers? The rest of transport rollers. Uh -huh. Yeah. So. And here we go again. Freezer rollers provide constant tension to move the film through each each tank. Okay, so turn around equipment or turn around assembly at the bottom of each tank. I'm talking about it again, but I already explained it to you, so I'm not going to Goes over network. You have to turn around equipment of the transport rack, except, uh, well, that's it. Keep, keep it the the uh, as the name is saying, the turn around equipment is to help one film to move from one tank to the next. Okay. Okay. So these that. are going to be found at the top. Okay. Um, it's a line guy shoes can scratch the films, and then the film is not going to turn or it's not going to go to the next tank properly. Okay, 
entrance rollers. The entrance rollers are uh, when the, this is the first set of rollers. When when the fill moves from one tank to the next, one rack to the next, you have this entrance roller that will catch that film. That's it. Okay. okay. So you have a guy shoe at the top, and the film is turning, and then you have the first uh, the first set of uh, the entrance rollers. Uh, go back. Here, on top here, you will see those uh, entrance rollers. Okay, okay, good. Okay, and obviously you have a set of entrance rollers right next to the feeding tray, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, really not part of a tank. Uh, the first set that you find. They just grab the film and move it to the first tank, to the developer tank. Film feeding, okay? It's important to always do it straight along the short axis, okay? Why? Because you have those micro switch, remember that she was describing, and the micro switch, what it does is when one film goes in, it stops, okay? And it measures, and, and so the film should always go, instead of go, if this is the uh, feeding tray, I don't want to do it like this. I want to do it like this, okay? Because it's measuring this, because, and we're going to see it later, after a specific length or a specific number of films, okay, the replenishing system works. Get some chemicals out, get fresh chemicals in, okay? That makes sense? So that's why it's important to do it along the short axis. Uh, so it's a series, the drive system. So we're gonna talk, so we're done with the rollers and stuff. So important to remember, transport rollers, planetary rollers, master rollers, right? Guy shoes, yeah? That's pretty much what we have done so far, right? No big deal, right? Okay, good, okay. All right, so let's talk about the drive systems. What is really moving the, 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 uh, the machine, okay? So it's a series of gears and mechanical devices uh, that turn the rollers. Okay. Uh, they are driven by a single motor. It's a little motor you have, like a little bicycle, motorcycle motor, small one that it has a it has a chain. Okay, and that's what moves everything. And then you buy the set of gears that you have. It moves the whole assembly. Okay, the speed of the motor determines the length of time of processing. Okay, uh, there are in. in you could change the speed depending on the type of film, the type of work that you do. For example, mammography film, you need to keep it longer. Okay, so instead of uh, the typical 90 second uh, film processing uh, on the uh, on mammo, I think it's two minutes. So it goes to 120. We'll, we'll look at it later, I can't remember the top of my head. But it stays longer because you want the film to be to be very contrasting, very black and white, and so you need to give it more time in the in the process. Okay. Okay. All right, drying. Okay, so it's just like you're drying your hair. It's a big blower. That's why you have a big motor and a big blower that blocks hot air. Uh, it is used to dry hot, you know, to dry the uh, the film. The blower supplies heated air to the drier section of the film processor, which consists of tube-like rollers, you saw them, so the video. Most of the air is circulated, the rest is vented to prevent buildup of excessive humidity in the dryer. It is important, if you ever work with this processor, it's important the vents, or like any other electronic <laughs> device, you have to keep the vents open, okay? Because that's what is getting all the heat out. If you don't, then excess heat will build up, uh, and just like any other machine, this machine will break down. Okay. I don't know about you guys, I always go to this with my daughter and my wife, and we, they always cover the vents, so any electronic device, the TV, they always covered, the vents are always covered, the computer is always covered, and then you touch them, it's really hot. You have to let that air go out, okay? Uh, okay, so, uh, so the vents, on the processor, they are going to be found on the side, uh, right next, right on, on the side, on both sides. It, it, it's important. Don't put any boxes. Don't put any uh, supplies or anything there. Then you don't get a good circulation of good.
good clean air. All right. Dry system, if the squeegee crawls over, that's what you were asking, right, Eric? Yeah. The squeegee? Okay. So you're going to squeeze it. That's what it is. They're very tight rollers, oh. and their function is to squeeze as much of the, uh, of the water that's just bringing it in, into the dryer. Okay, that's, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, to figure that's what it's out. Called, it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, remove excess water. Okay. And then right after that, hot air is blown through the slotted tubes. Okay. All right, so when the film comes out, it's completely dry. Okay. So no more wet readings anymore. But the, the term was still use it. Even now. Even, but, but, even, even when they were using, when we were using uh, automatic processes, there was no more wet readings. Because the films were not wet. Okay. Replenishing system replaces chemicals as they are depleted. As the chemicals are used, okay, then uh, the chemicals are not as effective as when they were fresh. And so it needs to have a consistent replenishing of new chemicals. There are different ways that replenishing can happen depending on how busy the facility is. Uh, volume replenish replenishment and flood replenishment. Uh, volume is more effective, okay, but it's, it's more expensive. Uh, and then you have flood replenishment, replenishment uh, and they both work pretty well. Uh, the basic idea is that, uh, well, let's, let, let's see. Okay, flood replenishment, replenishment. Periodic, pre, pre, periodically replenish chemicals regardless of the number of films processed. So it doesn't matter how many films you have processed, every so often the thing will replenish itself. Okay? And it's used for a small volume of films. Say you're if you're you work at a clinic and you're processing maybe 30, 60 films a day, this will be a convenient way. Okay? Because every so often, every hour, every two hours, you add more chemicals. Okay. Uh, so the complete replenishment happens every two or three hours. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, it happens two or three times in a day, in an eight hour day, which, which is fine. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's just fine if you're doing this many films. And you say, well, that's a lot of films. Well, okay, I guess so. If you're the only expert tech there, yeah. 60, 70, well, oh, these are not cases, these are films, so it might not be too bad. Uh, so it's in a small, small volume clinic. Uh, okay, and then you have the, um, well, a few more things. Volume, re chemicals are replaced for each film that is that is uh, processed when more than 50 or 60 films are developed. Okay, replenishment rates, uh, four to five uh, milliliters of developer per inch of film. Huh? Can you ask one? Yeah. Yeah. This one too? Oh, no. Next one. Got it? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, flood replenishment. So, let's go to volume replenishment. Were you done? Sorry. Okay. okay. Volume replenishment. Okay. So, as the name is saying, uh, volume of chemicals are replaced for each film that is processed. Not specifically for each film, but they measure. Okay, like I told you before, they measure. When more than 50 to 60 films are developed, okay, this is when it's convenient. So this is for a high volume. You work at, at any, you know, decent sized hospital. This is what you want. This is what you need. Obviously, if you had a system like this, Kaiser will use a system like this, where you're going all the time, right? 24/7. You know, you're you're. It's a high volume place, place, and so that's what you will need. Okay. All right. The, uh, for every four to five milli millimeters of developer, four to five milliliters of developer per inch of film. So that's how they do it. So have film, you know, whatever many inches of film you have, you will add uh, four to five milliliters of developer, six to eight milli milli milliliters of fixant. Right. Okay. <laughs> What's going on with that photographic vision? Hmm? What was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. I must.
must be done according to manufacturing specifications. Every manufacturer has very specific, very specific. I'm keeping you awake, huh? I'm not having all those things here. <laughs> so, uh, every manufacturer, depending on, on what type of film you use, Kodak, Adva, Fuji, they have very specific ways of doing and processing their films. Okay, so they will tell you, this is how we want our films to be developed, okay, and for how long, and because it will present this characteristic. So that it is important to follow. Why am I bringing this up? Is because a lot of times the technologists think is is just one way of processing films, and it's not. It depends on the characteristics of the film. So it's important to follow the instructions. This is one thing where you want to follow instructions. This is not one where you think you can build it, right? You buy something, you try to build it, ah, forget about instructions. You try to go ahead and do it. Yeah, or it only happens to me. <laughs> no. No? Okay. All right. Yeah. So this is one time where you want to follow the instructions. Otherwise, you're going to be surprised with some really wacky films. Yeah. All right. So star solution. Uh, this is acetic acid and potassium bromide must be added to fresh developer chemistry. Always. Okay. Because uh, you, you want to activate the developer. Okay, otherwise it, it just it take you too long, it'll take half a day to get it going because you need to bring it to the right temperature. So you add this entire solution, acetic acid and potassium bromide, to get it going. Um. Okay. <laughs> Is there any like YouTube videos or things that you suggested on like the process of film? Okay. Like, yeah, like there's the, like, a few. Stores. You can go take a look. Right here. Uh, yeah. Go under X ray film developer, yeah. X ray film processing. And you can find some. Uh, so some like, a lot of them highlight. are by hand. So uh, I didn't want to show them to you. Yeah. You, you can look. Yeah. Okay. I think there is a few here that I found that they are for uh, dental film. Same thing. It's just okay. they're tiny little tanks. The tanks yeah. are <laughs> this big, but it's the same thing. It's the same process. The tiny, tiny film, tiny tanks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody here in dentistry you know what I'm talking about? Almost every class I have a dental person. No. No, not that. Okay. All right, requires running process for about 15 to 20 minutes prior to processing films. Why? Because you want to have the chemistry, the, the chemicals activated. Okay, and so you need to bring it to the right temperature and you need to have the, the right chemical activity. And so the manufacturers have determined that about 15 to 20 minutes is enough time to have it ready. Make sense? So it's just a matter of waiting. A lot of times what happens is doctors want to see the films and, and they're very anxious and if you process it, you're going to ruin it. They're not going to have a film. And so you have to let them know it takes time. You got to wait. If you don't wait, then I can process it, but your image is going to be a lousy image. Mm -hmm. Just let them know. Okay. It's important to wait. Picture? No? You have yeah. Okay, you have that one. Huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, process of solution safety. And I began to hint it, uh, last time of what you have to do. But here, here we go. You have you're going to be dealing with hazardous materials, and so all those hazardous materials, all those chemicals that you have in the darkroom, are all controlled by OSHA. Okay, Occupational Health and Safety Administration. Every chemical. So every chemical in that dark room has to be labeled okay it's not a good idea to be switching it's actually against a bunch of regulations to be switching chemicals from bottle to bottle and having bottles with no with no labels okay everything has to be labeled okay also the environmental protection agency is involved because you're getting rid of those chemicals and you saw the lady when it said oh just they just, the chemicals go down the drain. Well, yeah, it's in a special drain. It doesn't go into the 
common drain where you know uh, all the other uh, waste goes. Okay, it goes. It has to be collected and it has to be disposed properly. You just cannot drain it and send it to a river or to a lake or the ocean. It has to be processed, okay? okay? Also, the Department of Transportation is involved. So there's a lot of people that are involved when you're dealing with chemicals. OSHA, first of all, the chemicals themselves, uh, the environmental protection is why you're gonna do it, and then the Department of Transportation, when you're moving hazardous materials, they are involved. They need to know where it's going, from where to where, who's responsible for moving those materials. Okay. Uh, every, every chemical, when you're dealing with chemicals, you know, in this case, in the dark room, every chemical has to have a material data, sh data sheet. And here's uh, MSDS. Here's where you find all the specifics about the chemical. In case there is contamination, you have information, and you can provide that information to the expert to say, this is what this person got contaminated with, or this is the spill that we have here, is this. They can look at the uh, material safety data sheet and they can tell you how to handle it. Two more things and then you can take a picture. Protective eyewear. Anytime you're, you're working in the, <laughs> well, you don't have to bring eyewear when, you're, when nothing is going on, but if you open up the, uh, the processor. If you're handling chemicals, then you need to wear eyewear. I told you about what happened to a co-worker friend of mine that had a spill in one eye, right? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not good. Uh, rubber gloves, gloves and apron. Okay, if, uh, you know, if it gets in your hand, it can, it's corrosive, okay? Uh, once you start feeling your hands very slippery, that means your, your, your skin is dissolving. Oh. So that's why you gotta wash it very quick. <coughs> like when you talk bleach, for example, and your hands feel really sleepy, you go, oh, this is good soap. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's your skin that is dissolving. <laughs> that's, crazy. that's what it is. Does so, it feel like oh, when you're going your hand? or you're doing your soap you and you've done it a few times because you're germ freak and you're going, oh, you know, washing it three, four times, and then all of a sudden it begins to feel very sleepy even though the soap is gone. That's your skin. So it's probably time to stop, probably all the bacteria are really gone. Uh, yeah, so the same thing will happen here. You're not wearing gloves, you touch those chemicals, and I feel very soapy. Yes. So, go wash your hands. Uh, an apron, because you don't want those chemicals getting into your, your clothing, your uniform, or whatever you're wearing, okay? This is going to, you know, you leave it like that, and at the end of the day, you might have a hole somewhere in your clothing, so it might not be good. All right, circulation and recirculation or filtration system, okay? Different names that are used. Uh, and they are there to agitate the developer solution, okay? Remove reaction particles by the use of filtration system. So you have, and she talked about the, all the multiple filters. Do we need to know all those filters? No, no, you don't. Just make, remember that every tank, besides the water, okay, besides the water that is added to each tank, okay, which is filtered, every tank also has filters because of all the salts that are formed, all the chemicals you have. If you were to leave those chemicals that are sitting there for, say, a year, you come back, you're going to find a lot of salts. You know, there's a lot of solid stuff that has combined to with all the chemical reactions, so uh, you have to have filters there too. Okay, and the circulation uh, system is, is, is good uh, to stabilize the developer temperature, agitation and circulation. Agitation keeps solutions in contact with a heater element at the bottom of the tank and prevents layering of chemicals. Maintains developer temperature, heating elements are controlled by a thermostat. So at the end of each tank, you have a little piece, is a metal piece that it heat ups the, uh, the chemicals, okay? Uh, and it's there to get them, uh, get them warm, get them to, at the temperature you want. And then the system is also agitating it. And because of what we kind of, I hinted at you before, but imagine if the film is going down, 
okay? And if you have, if it's not agitated, then the higher concentration of chemicals is at the bottom. And then the processing, the developer of the film will only happen at the bottom. And so it will be inconsistent. And so that's why you want to have it agitated so everywhere it's the same reaction, not only at the bottom, okay, which is typically what, what happens. All right, uh, maintains all three solutions at compatible temperatures. The, the control system, the uh, heat exchanger, I'm oh, sorry, uh, so 90 second processors, typically this is the temperatures that you want. Uh, you can either memorize both temperatures or uh, or another conversion. How to do it one way or another, because I might ask you either way. All right, uh, so 90 second processor, uh, temperature is between 33 and 35 centigrade. If it is mammal, as I had pointed at you before, take a look, it's going to be a lower temperature, okay, 28 to 30. But you're gonna let the film stay in the chemicals longer. Okay, that's why this is a 90 second processor, one and a half minute processor, and this is a two minute processor. So with a two minute processor, which is specifically for mammal, okay? And if um, a hospital, whoever, or whatever entity is still doing mammal with film, this is a regular mandate. Okay, it has to be a two minute, a two minute processor. You cannot use this two minute processor. Uh, with these temperatures, 28 to 30. Let me ask you this, what will happen if I was to process a regular film, I made a mistake and I put it here, what will happen? It'll be really black and white. Exactly, your image are gonna be really contrasted and vice versa. Okay. All right, silver recovery system. Okay, metallic replacement, it can be done by different ways. You know, I'm just going to mention it, I'm not going to talk about it, okay. Uh, electrolytic chemical precipitation is the most common, okay. Resin, resin is just a, it's a filter, okay. It's a clot filter. Uh, uh, monitoring, okay, and film. All those are, the point here is that you don't want to waste all that, all that silver that you, that, that is in the chemicals now, you don't want to just drain it out. First, it's not good, because you're sending it to as a waste, but also it's expensive. And so what they have done is they can recover the silver and reuse it for, for anything they want, okay? Typically, we'll go back to the same system, you know, to make more film. You sell it, typically we'll sell it to Kodak or Fuji, whoever, sell it to them and then they reprocess it, okay? Uh, other processing methods. In addition to having the one, the 190, okay, the 190 processor or the two minute processor, you know, with time, they got really good at knowing how the chemicals work and the, the appropriate conditions for chemicals. And so I will say probably late 80s, early 90s, maybe even sooner, but that's the time when I became aware of it. They also have 30 second processors are very quick, very quick. And you say, well, that's pretty quick. I mean, 30 seconds is, is, is quick, guys. I mean, you put it in and oh, half a minute later, it, it's there. They were not widely used, okay? Because uh, they, they were, you know, there were problems with it. But, but you could use them, say, in the operating room. That will be an area where you need films right away. So you could have it, they're very portable. You can have them in there. A uh, few things that you gotta be aware, high concentration of chemicals and high temperatures. So accidents happen quite often with, with them, you know, people spilling it, uh, people getting it in their clothing or their skin, and so uh, that's why they were not so popular. But they were available. Uh, I remember, and, and every single 30 second processor that I remember seeing was located in the operating room where you need a, a, a quick turnaround, where the doctors don't have much time to be waiting for you to process the film, so. Uh, they were also extended processing, okay, three minutes. They were used for single emulsion, long time in the developer, greater contrast, lower patient dose, 
falls a bit. <laughs> you know, here you had very impatient doctors waiting for you, and so they are you know, they're going with their foot like that next to you, and three minutes can become an eternity, especially if you're doing something that need, they need to see it right away. Say, for example, you were doing an angiogram, where the patient is still on the table, they have a catheter, a tube, that is going up to their heart. <laughs> and so they are, they are really waiting for you. So, uh, yeah. You guys need a break? Yeah. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, take a break. <laughs> no, high contact.